If you watched this happen live, you would have seen a perfect example of why I felt the necessity to make this video series. You might be thinking like, why are you making videos on things that haven't changed in like two years? And honestly, that was my position too when people asked me to make these videos. But I'm actually shocked at how many people still don't know something as basic as this. What's going on? Are we just gonna wipe here? Cool. So I'll explain it all, but but that happens, and then this conversation occurs where the player says, what was the fear on that mage? Basically asking why I did that. And I thought, you know, isolated incident, right? Uh, no, because then the paladin in the group that wasn't me says, that fearing ads thing was beyond stupid. I said, you know if the ads are CC'd, they don't have to be killed, right? He says, your tanking was awful. So here we are making a video on something that people probably learned within the first few weeks of Shadowlands being out with two different DPS in the group not having any idea about it. It's kind of the nutshell of why we're making these videos in the first place. A lot of this stuff is relatively basic tips and tricks that you would just know if you did, especially pugging keys over the course of the last two years. But a lot of people are coming to these things for the first time. So I feel like it is important to try to explain all this stuff. That being said, this was the exact same footage I made for the last video where I showed people how to use Blessing of Freedom to remove an incredibly crucial mechanic from the last boss where we also had a rep paladin who didn't even try to do it and had no idea I was even doing it to him. So, but I think this example here where we show the direct failure from people not understanding this mechanic actually will help you learn even more. We talked a lot about this on stream the last few days about this dungeon and this boss specifically. I remember healing this boss early in the expansion, like season one especially, and finding it to be an incredibly hard fight to heal. But then I did it again recently on my Holy Pally. It's just automatically an easier fight for some reason. So I said, what was the difference? The difference is stuff like this. There's multiple things on this fight that can be done to dramatically improve your success rate on the encounter. Whereas in the beginning of the expansion, this was one of the bosses that was looked at as one of the hardest in the whole game. So what is going actually wrong here? Well, there are two ads that are casters. They're called the reanimated mages and you see it on the screen right now. This ad is a problem. It does a lot of damage with multiple types of casts and it needs to die before he finishes a set period of mechanics, otherwise it will explode and kill everyone. So typically what you would look like if you're trying to do it the way Blizzard might have intended is you would have to gather all of these mobs in and kill them, but also needing to interrupt them. And so the difference between season one and season three is that in the beginning, people would struggle to gather them. They would try all these weird techniques about where to stand and how to get them all together. And then they would try to kill them. And sometimes you wouldn't even succeed in killing them so it would get stressful but a lot of times a lot of casts were missed well now people know you can simply do what i'm trying to do in this video for whatever reason if these mobs are crowd controlled in some way any way at all they will not explode when he makes them explode they will simply die there is a lot of different ways to do this but right now in this footage i'm trying to use turn evil the paladin fear that only works on undead so you see i have the mob targeted is casting frostbolt volley if that gets off we're all going to take a lot of damage and on top of the mechanics we're probably going to be in a pretty dangerous position right now so either way i'm going to go ahead and fear it but the druid in the group has no idea this is happening and realistically neither does anyone else considering we have four classes that can do this exact same thing so he actually runs out there and starts attacking it this plan player dragged another ad with him over there as well. And now he's taken two mobs over there to fight a mob that was already dead. Make no mistake whatsoever, me see seeing this mob with turn evil is a one shot of the enemy. It will die. It does not need to be damaged. Nothing else has to occur. So he basically resurrected this mob and brought a friend over to it to put ourselves in an even worse position and ultimately ends up wiping us on this boss. And so he starts kind of bringing them back. But at this point, 
it's a little bit too late. The boss is now going to cast Final Harvest, which he's going to basically make all the ads explode. If they're alive, they're going to do an immense amount of damage to you. But I try to salvage this, and it's also important to understand what happens right here as well. We have three ads alive. So here's our options. One, we can kill these mobs, some of them having over 60k health within three and a half seconds. We could commit a weapon in the dungeon to that, or we simply can just perhaps outgear the situation and maybe it's doable. Number two, we could try to survive with the big raid cooldown. That's very doable, and I think most pug groups probably won't have the wherewithal to pull that off, but the only reason I ultimately die here is because I actually get hit by the residuals of the mob dying. As you'll see, everybody else actually survives. I go for option three. CC all of the mobs that are alive again. Same thing, whether you do it when they spawn or whether you do it at the last second. As long as they are CC'd, meaning they have some loss of control on them, they cannot explode for whatever reason. Now that obviously includes turn evil, but it also includes any type of stun. So what you could actually do here is simply just not even kill these things and then just AoE stun them when he's about to kill them and they basically won't have existed. Like, yeah, sure, you could make this mistake in a variety of different ways, but as long as people recognize that all we have to do to get through this is just simply CC them again, we're good considering we have four different classes that can do it. But my plan was basically CC that one, stun that one, and then hope this one dies. But you see here, we only actually have one add up and I ultimately get hit by the residuals after trying to make a big play there. But you see just how much damage that did. That is on a fortified 16. But now that you've seen it done wrong, here's what it should look like. That one's trapped, so then this one gets my controls. And that's it. Easy as that. You now see we're only fighting three of the mobs. One is in an ice trap out there from the hunter, and the other one is my pet. So it's my pet. Let's talk about what the actual options are for doing this. The blanket answer is literally anything that creates a loss of control. But in season one, control undead counted as that. At some point, they changed it. It used to work where when he would make it explode, if it was my pet, it would just count as that type of loss of control and just explode and it would be gone. But then after season two came out, they made it just survive. Like it doesn't get affected by it because it's my pet. So there's another option here, which you might have seen me do, which is just simply release it and then stun it as he's casting the ability. This is pretty much a bait. It feels like it's probably going to confuse a lot of people. I do it all the time anyway because I don't feel like it's a significant amount of confusion. But just in case you do something like this and people kind of freak out or react, you'll know why. Because they're used to the mobs being dead and then no danger. And they might not know that if you stun it personally, you can actually remove that mob yourself. But you're basically taking it just long enough and then you stun it and then it's like it's been CC'd the whole time anyway and it's gone and your stun's up every time as a blood DK. But so some other options that I'm definitely aware of. Well, we said Hunter Trap, Shackle and Dead should work, Turn Evil of course works, Paralyze can be used on any target anyway, so that should work too. But I believe that's probably it for hard CCs, things that you could put down and just kind of forget. Just be aware that if you're doing any of these, it's important that the group be aware that it's going to happen so people don't kind of run around and just break it immediately like we showed with that druid in the, in the footage there. But there is definitely a play to be made here with regular stuns as well. So even if it does break, you can use any type of stun, any type of fear, any type of ability that will put this mob under a loss of control. And of course, control undead as your last ditch effort to simply just remove that mob from being able to be hit. And like I said earlier, this is the key reason why this fight is easy. So I hope that this can be a good place for you to jump off into how fights progress over the course of an expansion and what the knowledge pool should look like by this point in the expansion. As an aside, it's one of the main reasons why I'm not extremely excited about these kind of one and done dungeons coming in future seasons of World of Warcraft. A lot of this strategical power creep that develops is going to not exist when you only do Grim Rail Depot for a few months and then it's gone forever. And that is going to make dungeons a lot harder for your average player. So the takeaway message here is just be aware that if you've been doing the same dungeon for well over a year, multiple seasons, there's going to be a lot of small optimizations that kind of gradually 
develop in the community. And if you're doing these dungeons for the first time at the end of a season, at the end of an expansion, you've missed a lot. And it's incumbent upon you to recognize that and try to think about strategical plays that can be made that you might not even be aware of are happening. This kind of stuff is not going to go away. And the faster you can develop these and learn them, the better a player you will be, especially in a pug scenario like this, where it just takes a ton of damage out of the fight and makes the fight considerably easier. With that being said, I feel like I've kind of run the list out on all of these options. There's one or two more that I could consider making. If you guys have seen anything that you'd like me to cover, try to get footage of, let me know. But otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope this has helped and we will see you guys in the next one.